Good morning, friends. Welcome to Worship with Christ Church today. My name is Edward Good, and I'm pastor uh, here at this church, and I'm grateful you're with us wherever you may be. Uh, for those who have been uh, tuning into these services online, uh, you may recognize this. This is my back deck at my house. And uh, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, <laughs> this is my back deck. Well, I'm out here today because this is one of those places for me that if I need to kind of get away and just listen, be still before God, um, this is one of those places for me. I mean, there's other places, but if I just kind of need to get out somewhere for about five minutes, this is one of those places, especially early in the morning, to just be still and be silent before God. And so as we're talking in worship today in the message about how it is that God is still speaking and how God um, can continue to speak into your life and mine, wanted to be out here for that. So that's why we're out here today. I do want to remind you that uh, starting in June, we're going to be sharing what we're calling our gifts of a sacred summer. We'll be sharing that in worship, but we'll also be having some opportunities online as well as in person uh, for getting together to go a little deeper in some practices that will hopefully not just make this a special summer, but truly a sacred and a holy summer. So uh, look for that. We're going to share more about that next Sunday and the week after. Also, today is a day that we remember as Mother's Day. And so in worship today, in, in our in-person service, we are giving out flowers to every woman who comes in, whether they're a mother or not, because we just simply want to honor the women of this church and the women in our lives. And so um, today, even though we, we can't you know, pass out flowers electronically, we do want to just say thank you. And especially to, uh, to moms, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And so today, as we worship, may you hear and experience the holiness and the voice of God speaking into your life today. Grace and peace and love and joy be with you. Oh 
Our scripture reading today from the book of Acts, uh, we get into uh, chapter 10. So we're skipping a little bit ahead from where we were last week with the story of Philip and Simeon on that deserted road. And today we're going to be hearing really the end of a story. Uh, And so I want to encourage you, even though we're only going to hear a couple of verses from chapter 10 today, I want to encourage you to read the whole of chapter 10, maybe even right now. Pause the video, read the whole of chapter 10, and kind of see what's 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 come in there but uh if uh, you want to just read it after the service that works as well but we're jumping ahead as we look at another piece of learning to be the church again and what is god uh, stirring in us today as the church as god stirred the church so many thousands of years ago as well so as we prepare to hear god's word let us pray Lord our God, thank you for the gift of your word, and we pray for your Holy Spirit to illumine the reading, the interpretation, and and the living out of your word in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were as astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. While I am not a graphic designer, I'm a bit of a graphic design geek, maybe a snob, depending on what term you want to use. And sometimes the church frustrates me when it comes to to what we put out to the world graphically. There's actually a website that was up for a while. I don't know. Honestly, I don't even know if it still is, but it was called badchurchwebsites.com. And it wasn't just uh, websites. It was just, you know, bulletins with crazy images and just stuff that churches have put out. One of the most classic ones for me was there was a church website one time that the very first image that greeted you when you got to the website was this animated uh, image of a Bible that uh, was like flapping, like it had wings and it was like flying through the clouds. Um, Yeah, it was something special. (laughs) It was something special indeed. Um, And, and, not just individual churches, but denominations as well. Um, you know, my the denomination I'm ordained in, the Presbyterian Church USA, we've got this logo that um, it's just way too complicated. Like, so as you, you see it on the screen here, um, can you find all the symbols that are in there? Fire, dove, pulpit, Bible, preacher, cross. I think that's all of them. There might be more. But it's one of those that feels like a committee designed it and we've got to put all these things in there, right? So I want to say one of the things that, that, uh, that, um, you know, for us as partners in the United Church of Christ, I got to say, I think the UCC has one of the best logos out there. I thought that years ago when, when, uh, the UCC first started their campaign about, uh, God is still speaking and it was just this big comma. And even the new one now that still integrates a comma, but has a sense of movement and almost like water and life and vibrancy. Um, it's a simple logo. It gets to the heart of what is it central to um, the UCC's identity. Um, it's a great logo. It's a great logo. But even more so, it's a great message. God is still speaking. And when we look at the stories in Acts, and especially where we've come to now in Acts chapter 10. That is a message that the early church was learning, and that's a message that I think sometimes we need to be reminded of. God is still speaking. So when we last left our story, um, the, the story of, of Philip and Simeon on that deserted road, 
we, we skipped ahead now into chapter 10, but in between we have the story of that guy Saul. If you remember last week, we talked about Saul, who was persecuting the church, dragging people out. He was responsible for the death of Stephen. Um, Saul, beginning of chapter 9, Saul's converted to Christianity and begins to preach and share. And so we have that story of Saul, and now we come to hear the story of Peter and Cornelius. But something that, that happens more here than in any other part uh, up to this point in Acts is this message of God spoke, God said, and then people did, or people responded. So the story of Philip that we had last week, okay? Philip went to Samaria when the, the church began to be scattered. God spoke, and Philip listened and began to share in Samaria. Then God spoke to Philip and told him to go this deserted road, so he did. Then talked to this man in the chariot, so he did. God spoke to Simeon about the baptism, Simeon did. And then Philip goes to Azotus in, in Caesarea. And then Saul on this road, he's on his way to go and persecute believers that are in Damascus. And on that road, Jesus speaks to Saul. And then in Damascus, there's a believer whose name is Ananias. And Ananias gets this leading, this message from God to go and, and find this man, Saul, who's been struck blind. Now, Ananias knows who Saul is, knows what Saul's been doing, right? It's a pretty bold step for Ananias to listen to that. But that was the message that God gave to Ananias. Go. And Ananias did. And then here, we get to chapter 10. And you have a story of Cornelius, a man who is a Roman centurion. Okay? He is a Roman centurion. It talks about he's a devout man and he feared God, but he's still a Roman soldier. God spoke to Cornelius. He said, find this man Peter, bring him to your home. And then Peter up on top of the roof of the building where they are, they're at, falls into some kind of trance. And three times God speaks and gives Philip Peter a message that challenges him to the very core, challenges him to begin to expand the horizons of what he'd understood about what it means to follow. To go to this Roman soldier's house. And then the fourth time God speaks to Peter that, by the way, Cornelius' men are knocking at the door. Okay, then God continues to speak. Speaks through Peter as Peter goes to Cornelius' home. Peter begins to share. And the Gentiles, the, the people outside their community, begin to respond. And even, I love this part, if you caught this when, when Katie was reading the passage, while Peter was still speaking... So it's like Peter's up there. Peter's given this message while Peter's still speaking. The Holy Spirit falls upon them and the people respond. And the question is asked, can anyone withhold the water of baptism? Sound kind of familiar from last week, doesn't it? Can anyone do it? No. And so they were ordered, so they baptized Cornelius and his family and the other Gentiles who were there with him. And just as you read further on in the book of Acts, you're going to see time and time again, God speaks and they follow. It is tempting, my friends, to think that because we have a Bible that has 66 books, it kind of seems fixed in place to think that is all that God has said. But the reality is, is God is still speaking today. God didn't stop speaking after the book of Acts. God didn't stop speaking in the 2,000 or so years since. God kept speaking. And God is still speaking today. I truly believe with all of my heart that God is speaking into this time today. A word about something new that God is up to. Well, in fact, God's always been up to something new. But that God's going to work through this time that we are in to do something new.
and that God is speaking through voices that we expect to hear from. God is still speaking through scripture. God is still speaking through pastors, church leaders, and prophets. But God is also speaking through voices we have not been used to hearing. Voices that we've tried to push off to the side that, well, we don't want to hear. But God is speaking through them. Are we listening? in our own lives, even as I'm saying this. Some of you might be saying, okay, God speaking, really? You know, like if someone came up to you and said, you know, God told me something, how would you respond? It might be one of those response things that, you know, people go, really? God spoke to you? <laughs> but again, the question is, are we listening? I'm reading a book about silence right now by a Buddhist teacher named uh, Thich Nhat Hanh. And one of the things he shares right off the bat is that it is very hard for us to be silent, to find stillness, because we fill our lives with so much noise. I mean, think about it. What do you do when you get home? When you get home from the day, do you turn on the radio? Do you turn on some music? Do you turn on the television? Turn on the news? And so you might have that that soundtrack of the news or other things going on all the way around you and you don't have that space for silence. When you get in the car, do you automatically turn on talk radio or do you turn on music or turn on a podcast or something else? Or do you just maybe use that time to be silent? Do you try to set aside even just a few minutes a day to just simply be still? Try to turn off the noises and turn off notifications. Put your phone on silent or, oh my goodness, turn it off. <laughs> because it is those things that clutter up our minds and clutter up our hearts and clutter up our lives that makes it hard to hear that voice of God that, yes, is still speaking. I mean, I love this section in the book of Acts. God speaking to Philip. God speaking to Cornelius. God speaking to Saul and to Ananias and to Peter. To this group of Gentiles. God speaking to people in new ways that we might not be expecting. And what I love in the, back, in the, in the story is that, yeah, the church was listening. The church was listening. So I want to encourage you this week. If you don't have that as a normal practice, this week, set aside some time every day to just stop. Make sure all the, 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 the sounds that you can turn off in your, in your house or your apartment or in your office or wherever it might be, or even if you just need to stop your car and, and sit in a parking lot for a few minutes away from everything, to just take some time to be still and listen. Maybe today it's just, you're going to take two minutes. Maybe that's all you can do before kind of the mind starts racing again. Maybe if you do two, you could maybe do four tomorrow and maybe eight the next day or maybe even just six or just maybe at the end of the week shoot for a goal of five. Okay, that may be all you can do right now. God hasn't stopped speaking, my friends. The question is, are we going to listen? Listen the way that Peter did. Listen the way that Cornelius did. Listen the way our siblings in faith, our ancestors in faith did. God is still speaking. May we always be listening. Amen.
prayer time today I'm just going to record some sound put some pictures up not going to say much but just to use this time to listen listen for what God's speaking into your life so as you listen you're going to hear some sounds of nature maybe the breeze blowing you're going to hear some birds you're also going to maybe hear some kids playing in the background and there's going to be some cars that go by. But just take this time to just settle and listen for God speaking. So let us pray. After we've heard worship today, you can probably guess what the benediction is. May you hear God this week. But may you be open. May you be taking time to to listen. To listen to how God is still speaking to you and to me, to the church, to the world. 
So go with the grace, the peace, the love, and the joy of God the Creator, Jesus the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit the Sustainer this day and every day.